Hi everybody, welcome back to Spurverse, my scale model universe, 65 million years in the making of part two of Build Out T-Rex from Pegasus. Thanks for joining me on this journey and I greatly appreciate each and every one of my subscribers. It's been such fun getting to know all of you and getting your amazing comments and, you know, good or bad. Uh, Everybody um, has their opinion, and, and it's, it's welcome here and appreciated. Okay, um, so I've got a, a, a swiveling T-Rex, so don't be concerned. <laughs> it's on a pin in, uh, in its correct position, but I'm moving it around. I've done this. Uh, it's making it a lot easier for me to, to, uh, to, to, to get some paint on this brute. Um, and uh, a brute it is. I've been doing an awful lot of digging and diving into the world of uh, these ancient uh, creatures, trying to sort of get a sense of what they look like uh, in terms of coloration and, and what makes sense, you know? Um, so it's definitely a, a, a lizard of some kind, that, that we know. It's uh, carnivorous, that we definitely know. And we also know that it probably lived in um, a, a pretty tropical type of climate, right? So, um, you know, the, the, brute, the sheer bruteness of all of this says to me, okay, d does it need to hide from anything? Not really, it's an apex predator. Uh, so, it, but it does have all of these sort of interesting markings, I suppose, that are, that are part of, uh, the, the sort of the, the natural order of things in, in their, in, on their flesh. Um, it's hard to tell from movie grabs, if you're going to go the Jurassic Park, uh, Park route, you know, they did a lot of things to really make it look angry and it was painted purely for dramatic effect in some ways, uh, but it has greens and blues and browns and um, it has interesting sort of markings. So we're, we're going to do that. We're going to try and, and, and create a very natural but dramatic effect, but it's going to be what my eye thinks it is. So uh, apologies in advance if it doesn't look anything like a T-Rex when we're finished. Because at the end of the day, it's your model, it's my model. But hopefully we'll have a lot of fun trying to put this together. So in part two, uh, we're going to be doing all of our painting and we're going to be building our diorama and we'll be doing a big dramatic reveal at the end because um, that's the plan. <laughs> So anyway, let's, uh, let's dive in. Um, I have been doing some pre-shading and I have been using uh, the, uh, the uh, Model Air 71053, the dark sea gray. Uh, that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I've been using. And uh, I'm, um, I'm sort of... Uh, I've been doing just some sort of some pre-shading and stuff like that. Obviously, we've got a lot of blending to do. I was playing around yesterday with some other colors. You know, I pulled in uh, some green. I, I, I got a cement gray, which has a lot of green in it, and I'm liking that. Um, and I've got a light green in here, which, which I think will be fun uh, for, for doing some mottling. Um, and I've uh, also pulled in some brown. I've got a, a nice pale brown here um, for, for, because I think, but I, because I think it, it, it sort of calls for it. So what I'm going to do now in this pass is I'm going to be putting some, uh, some brown on here. Uh, now I'm using my Iwata HPCH uh, with airflow control and I've got my PSI up quite high. A lot of you are going to go, oh, it's too high. <laughs> but I'll tell you, in this California climate with these paints, uh, pushing 35 PSI, as long as you've got some amazing control, as I do, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Um, so I can control my PSI. I can take it all the way down to, to nothing uh, with, with this little, um, well, I'll, get, yeah, I'll show you this. Uh, 
there it is, this little nozzle, nozzle right here. Um, anyway, if you're not familiar with this brush, it's a, it's a great brush, as long as you keep it clean. So this morning when I came out to the shop, and you know, I'm puddling away, I'm, get, I'm 3D printing in the background, you know, another project. Uh, I've got some other things I'm working on, I've been cleaning up, and I go, oh, I'm gonna use my Iwata CH. Wouldn't work. <laughs> Wouldn't work. So I had to spend the next 30 minutes cleaning it, which is fine because you got to know how to clean your airbrush. You got to know how to break it down. That's very important. Um, and I say that from somebody who did not know <laughs> how to break down my airbrush and was constantly trying to figure out what to do with it. And shamefully, shamefully, there was a moment in time, now it's years ago now, where I got so frustrated with it, I threw the thing away. A beautiful Iwata brush, I threw it away. Now, I tell you this in full disclosure only because there might be some uh, newbies uh, amongst my subscribers who are just as frustrated with airbrushes. Don't be, it's operator error. Learn how to break it down and clean it and you'll be fine. There's plenty of tutorials on that. Okay, let's get some brown on here and uh, let's, Let's see what we can uh, do here with the brown. Um, now, I'm not thinning these paints at all. There's no need to. Um, and I am just trying to go for some, some mottling effects. So, um, is this the best angle for you? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. Um, no. There we go. <coughs> So I'm just trying some things here. And what I'm trying to do is just sort of play with the patination on the, uh, follow my, my kind of blending lines. Now obviously this will all get blunt, blended out so nothing here is in stone. I'm just trying to see what happens when uh, you add these, start to add these sort of variations of color. And um, I'm, I'm feeling like it's, uh, it's starting to look pretty good. The great thing about these model airs is they go on wet and look pretty deep and then they come back and they, they dry out, uh, you know, they go, they go pretty, they go pretty light. So that's the good news because you can, you can really play, away, uh, play around with texture. Now I've got lots to do here because um, he's, uh, and I've got to be really careful too that as I'm, as I'm sort of taking him down, that uh, I'm, not, um, I'm not giving myself too much grief. But I think you'll agree that uh, it is starting to look a little more like a lizard. So uh, we'll, we'll sort of keep playing around with this um, until we, you know, we get a blend that we like. But... Um, So I can get, uh, let's, let's, let's get, let's get his facing camera here. Let's go to, uh, there we go. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, paint along with you, <laughs> which is, which is a weird thing. You know, if you're in the shop alone and you're doing your thing, you, you just do your thing. Right now I'm going, oh, there's people watching and they don't want to see the back of your head. They're not interested in something that is out of focus. And they don't have the patience to sit around and watch a blank screen for 20 minutes while you bloviate, as some of my subscribers like to refer to it, you know. So anyway, okay. Now, one of the things here, oh, let me... Let me just, there we go, is I'm going to just start to introduce a little bit of color here just to see what we got.
you can see he starts to take on a personality. It's really interesting what happens when you, when you start to blend color. It really, is, it, it really, now it's all very raw right now, right? So, you know, you, you can't really, you can't really um, think of it in terms of, uh, well, you know, uh, that doesn't look very, that doesn't look very good or that, you know, whatever. You've got to keep blending and you've got to keep, you've got to keep seeing what happens. Now, we don't have washes on this. There's no dry brushing on this yet. We're just playing with color. We're just putting color on. And I thought it would be, I thought it would be fun if you, uh, if you saw us, if we did this together, you know, if we were putting color on together and looking at it together and going, okay, well, what do we think? I don't know. It's a lot better than here. Here's the finished thing. What do you think of that? Um, I think. Okay. Let me, um, let me see where we are. I'm going to get a little more of my, well, that's interesting. That's my dark yellow. Where did I put my, here it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's get a little, just a little more of this camel brown on here, just so that we've got a, a nice even coating of it. You know, we may even play around with it on our roadkill, which we'll get to eventually. Um, I don't know. You know, it's very interesting. You start to think about what 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 the um, the color of a dinosaur should look like, right? What, what is the color of a dinosaur? And you start to look and you go, oh, paleontologists, you know, they're all, ge everybody's guessing. I mean, we can assume based on certain attributes, right? I, I assume we can assume based on certain attributes that um, it might look A certain way. Now, um, don't panic about the mouth. I've just got basic colors on there. The tongue, I can say, with some degree of confidence is relatively good, uh, but there's nothing else good about it right now. What you're looking at is just basically, we're just, we're just starting the process here. I think his belly should be, his belly should be a little sort of lighter because it doesn't get the sun. We'll get some greens on there as well. Okay, um, it's pretty good. Uh, now, what I think I'd like to do is uh, we're going to introduce. Um, see, we've got in the studio. This is looking pretty good, but you know nothing's blended yet. I've got to do a lot of dry brushing, and I've got all these little um, here. These little, these little nodules here. They've all got to be painted and then dry brushed. But um, it's, it's sort of getting the mottling on the skin that I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in. Okay, I'm going to go for, and I'm going to be brave here, I'm going to go for this, um, this very dark yellow here. Let me just do a quick, I'm going to do a quick, quick flush of my One of the nice things about having your pressure up a little higher for this kind of work is with this, you can really, you know, you do a, you can flush your, your brush out, your airbrush out quite, quite nicely. And um, you, you do get this, uh, a, this control, this incredible control with this brush. 
again, uh, for those of you just joining me, <laughs> welcome. Uh, Iwata HPCH. I think it's one of the one of the uh, one of the most incredible brushes. Here, I, I want to show you something here for a second. I just want to do something here because I want to show you the control of this brush. And this is in the hands of a rank amateur. And I'm not just saying that to be cavalier or, or you know, play games. I'm serious. Uh, I come to this hobby shop every day and try to learn something. I really do. And, um, and I don't just, I'm not just saying that. But the reason why I share this stuff with you is because we're all in various degrees of skill, right? I don't want any of this to intimidate anybody or feel like you can't do it because you can. We all can. It's just taking your time, and if you don't have time, and I've said this before, even if you have 10 minutes, sit down, glue a couple of parts together and leave, but build something. Please, build something. It's good for the soul. Okay, look at this. Um, so, I just want to show you the control I have of this brush. And then wide, you get a big splot. Isn't that great? Good brush, good all around brush. Okay, so we're gonna try and get some, some, just a little bit of yellow on his nose. Oh, I'm liking that. Check that out. Let's, uh, let's pull him off his stand here for a second and back him up. I'm liking that, right? I think I'm even gonna get it in the eyeballs, you know, just to sort of get some, get some bases back there. Um, it's a little intense, but it's okay. Now this will, as I've said, this will start to, um, this will start to really, uh, really soften as you, um, as you, as you, as you let it dry. Um, but I'm, um, I'm, I'm spinning this thing around and it's pretty funny because I'm just knocking the crap out of everything that's here. And then I think what I'm going to do is pull it, pull him, because his belly needs to be quite lighter and it, it's going to be even lighter than this, but Now it's interesting too because it's got these these really uh, interesting kind of musculature folds of skin. Um, now it's such a big it's such a big piece of vinyl that I'm not super worried. I'm not super worried about sh shadows. I am worried about losing my brush on the no. uh, Not super worried about shadows because. Um, because it, 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 it's so big that it, it makes its own. So uh, that's just one of the, 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 great, the great things about this. Okay, um, 
really starting to to come together. And the the other thing too is is now I'm going to obviously have to do some detail brushing and some dry brushing, and I'm going to have to really get in there with uh, with my with my Tyrannosaurus mouth. It's just got basic color in it, but I think as you can see, it's really coming together. So I'm um, I'm going to keep playing with it and blending it and softening it, um, and when I get closer to what I think it you know it's starting to look like. Uh, will come back. So it's been a lot of blending and playing around and trying to get this right and I'm not entirely sure under the studio lights that uh, you're going to be able to really get the, 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 full, the full sort of nuances of this but uh, trust me when I tell you. <laughs> She's looking pretty good. Um, so um, I'm feeling sort of happy with where she is from a skin perspective. I've done nothing to the mouth and face. I've got to work on that next. It's gonna be a lot of work. Um, not just to get the details right in the, in the mouth, uh, but then get some washes in there and then get, get a good coat, coat of my, um, of my uh, Liquitex gloss. Um, and then maybe, you know, some blood or what have you. And then I've got, I've still got a boatload of work to do on roadkill. Uh, but roadkill's coming together, um, really starting to, you know, get the right, the right sort of colors for it. And I'm going to start to pick out some stuff with a brush. A um, couple of paints I'm using as some blenders, which um, I'm absolutely in love with, is uh, these, these Comarts. Uh, they are really, really good for blending. So I don't know if uh, you, you guys um, have, have ever tried them, had uh, much success with them. Uh, I, I'm very happy with them. And then uh, what I'm using now for washes, which I discovered uh, several months ago now, I mean, maybe last year I, I discovered these. And um, these are, uh, they're called... Uh, the Army Painter. Um, let me get it in focus for you. There we go. They're Army Painters. They're called Quick Shades, and these are the washes. And they're, I guess, for gaming pieces or what have you like that, but they have an entire line of washes. I've pulled out the green tone, the red tone, and I've also pulled out uh, the flesh tone. And they come in, you know, I, I put a little bit in this, uh, in this uh, little jar here. Um, it's all water-based. I've got a nice soft brush. I didn't put too much in here. And um, what you'll see here is I can, I can brush this on and it's going to get in all those nooks and crannies. And it's going to start to, to really uh, give it that, that green tone that I'm looking for. So um, that's, that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, I'll let this sort of set up a little bit, not too much, but I'll let it set up a little bit. Now, if you want to uh, carry on right away with these, you, you, you absolutely can. They, uh, they, they, they don't mind, um, they absolutely do not mind uh, being mixed and, and matched. Um, and, you know, they, they're adding uh, the, this lovely sort of texture to everything that I'm really happy with. And, and of course, I'll just, it'll just continue to get better and better um, a, as, we, as, we, as we sort of continue to layer it. Now, what you probably cannot see, unfortunately, I don't know if you can or you can't. <laughs> If you can't, you'll let me know. If you can, please let me know. Um, is that it's, it's really, it's doing such a fantastic job on the skin here. There, there's a nice little close-up for you. And I'll, I'll, I'll just pop this in. And you can see how it's blending. Um, and it's just pulling everything together. Um, lots of yellows and browns uh, and grays and blacks. So, um, yeah, really, uh, really super happy with it. Here, we'll do, this, we'll do this piece right here so you can see what happens. We get the wash on. 
Now, uh, just like other washes, if you, if you think you've put too much on and you want to take it off, you can take it off. Um, it's water-based, and that, that's, the, that's the, the, the great fun of this stuff is, um, you know, and, you, and because, it, because it's uh, water-based, it, you, you don't have to uh, seal, seal what you're doing uh, to, to effectively allow this to work. Um, it works perfectly fine without it um, being sealed. And you don't really want to seal anything just yet anyway, because if you're still blending, um, it, makes it, it makes it difficult to, um, I think, to blend things if you, if you start sealing it. Um, but a big, big fan of these washes, big fan. So um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to continue to um, get this wash on like such and such. And uh, then we'll, we'll move to a different wash. We'll move to um, a different color, which I think will, will make a huge difference. Um, really starting to look reptilian, which I'm very excited about. Um, really blending nicely. Now, I've still got some, some details uh, that I, that I want to I, I wanna pick out. Um, and that's okay. You can put those over these washes. In fact, in some, sometimes I think it, it, it helps because, again, you know, you're, you're blending things. So, um, starting to look really good. Let me um, pull it out for a second here. I don't have any gloves on, but... That's okay. Uh, lay it down. Uh, get some more green on it. There's my flesh tone. And what I'm hoping to do for you is is put on some of the other washes, and and just show you how it all sort of works. To oh, together. I'm, um, and then, you know, once we're, we've, we've done with this, we can just come back and we can uh, soften that with some more color if we want to. You know, nothing is, nothing is, is, is in stone, as, it, as they say. Um, let me get him back on his... I nicked him. Bit of a no-no, but there you go. Okay, so let me um, let me get out of the the greens here and go to let's go to uh, a red tone. Let's go to a red tone and show you what that's all about. Um, let's see, let's go above here so we can see. Okay. And I'm not sure if you can really see what we're doing here. But what we're doing here is we're adding this wonderful patina to, to him. Um, I think it's a him. <laughs> All right, don't go there. Come on, behave, behave. Um, but um, our skin is not one color. Life is not one color. It's a thousand colors. That's one of the fun things about oil painting, by the way. You get to, you start looking at things. Look at a rock, look at a tree, look at a leaf. You realize it's not one color. It's all colors. It's a lot of color. And so that's what you got to kind of remember here when you're doing this, because that's going to make the difference. 
you're going to end up with something that is is going to work. I promise you, it's going to work. Um, now, I was, you know, at first when I started learning how to do all of this, I was very skeptical, very skeptical. But what you quickly realize is, is that's how you make things look great. Um, and it, and it does, does work. It really does work. So, um, yeah, super happy with that. And this, uh, this goes on really, like I said, it's a, it's a really wonderful, wonderful product. And I, I highly recommend, uh, it in your, in your arsenal for sure. Um, cause you also, the fun, the fun of it too is, is, you know, is you start to really see how this is coming together. I'm knocking over all my paints like bowling pins, but that's okay. You don't get to see that, which is great. Okay. Let me a little more in here. That should do it. Especially around the face. If I can get you, I'd love to get you close up here. Let me see if I can. Um, I don't know if I can. I think I can. Hold on here. One second. I'm, um, I'm playing with all this paint on my bench and it's turned into bowling pins because I've got, I've got Madam here on a, uh, on a turntable. Okay. Back her up. Uh, let's back her up even more. Back her up, back her up, back her up. Okay, there we go. Now you're going to start to see how, how the lizard is really working. This is really working for us. Uh, and um, yeah, it's re looking really natural. Now, oftentimes I've seen um, kits where the, um, you know, you've got yellows and greens and it's, it's super vibrant. I don't think these T-Rexes will like that. I just don't. But what the hell do I? <laughs> You're going to have to go with me on this because I think that, I think that they, um, they were, just a sort of like a tank they were utilitarian and uh that's my uh that's what i think okay so that's the red on and that really worked well so um you can see how these washes go on right so that's kind of fun so I'm going to continue to blend washes here. So now you know what I'm doing. Uh, it's not a step that you've missed. You know the product I'm using. You know how I'm doing it. Now it's just a question of, you know, taking your time and just going around and letting it do its thing. And, um, and then what we'll do is we'll come back. Uh, after I've put, I'm, I'm going to put one more to, uh, tone on the flesh tone. We'll put that on. We'll let that all dry. Uh, and then we'll start to pick out some of the details on the skin, the eyes and uh, the mouth. Okay. We're getting there. Uh, we are getting there and I'm uh, sort of starting to feel good about just exactly what's going on. Um, I've got a little bit of work still to do on those teeth, but 
I'm really happy with the, the, the leather look of the scales and every, everything else. Now, don't panic because you see all of these awful uh, greens. <laughs> I wanted to kind of just demonstrate what you, know, what you go through, the process you go through to see what you got and figure out if you like what you got. It's kind of like, you know, nothing is, is in stone. And, but it is important to, to, to say, hey, what do you think? These aquarium leaves, I've often thought, would be great for something. But I think they have to be painted and they're not, <laughs> they're not good enough for this. So I'm putting them away. Um, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with them yet. I do know I think they have to be painted. And, um, but, you know, I, I, I think it detracts from this diorama. That's, that's, that's my sense of it. So we say goodbye to the leaves. Uh, and then I've got really, I've got two pretty awesome, well, th I should say three pretty awesome pieces of uh, driftwood here. And I think that, I think one might, might be enough maybe two i like these i like these flat ones only because um i think they're, they're they're pretty dramatic so i think i'm probably just gonna i think what i'm probably gonna do is uh most likely because i can also turn this over too i really like the way this looks and i like the way it blends into the back here almost like he's 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 sort of stepped over it um, so I'm liking that. Um, and then I like, I like this one, um, which could, could sort of go like that. Now, what I've got to do is um, I've got to, got to figure out just exactly what I'm doing here. So uh, step one for sure is going to be getting this base blended into the, to, to the, this base blended into the, the main base. So uh, the way I have to do that is with either some, um, some kind of scenic plaster or perhaps uh, some Bondo. I think Bondo will give me a, b a better hold, although I'm gonna have to probably put a few screws or nails in just to kind of give it something to bite to. But I think that's the next step, is to, um, is, is, is to do that. So um, what I think I'm going to do is deconstruct her. Let me show you close up here because I think she's the mouse looking sufficiently good I think she's looking she's looking quite good and the teeth are looking quite dirty I just got to clean up the gum lines um, but I think she's looking quite good and I've 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 got her you know looking quite quite lizard like so I'm very happy with that um, let me just put this over here out the way and then uh, roadkill bless roadkill's heart roadkill just needs an eye um, I've got just got an eye I, I've got to uh, clean up the eye here and 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 get that looking looking right it's not right but um, everything else I think is looking quite good I like the uh, the, the what the washes have done to the skin it looks like I'm I'm quite happy with roadkill so that's good. We'll put roadkill over here just for now. Still lots of details, but what I wanted to end up with is just our base. So uh, what I have to figure out now is, is just how much of this I'm doing. I'm not going to do a whole lot, but I am going to do enough just to, to, to sort of get this edge blended up or into uh, the larger portion of the base. And then I can go ahead and... Um, add my, I, I usually like to use my AK 
uh, Interactive Earth, uh, which is a blend of globe paint and uh, textured material, sand probably. And I'll do that once I've got the, uh, the Bondo down and, and, and hardened. But I need, to, I need to blend it into that, this surface. So um, I'm going to mix up some Bondo and, and go ahead and get this blended in and then we'll take a look at that. Talk about working in a well ventilated area. Holy cow. Um, don't worry, I've got my shop doors wide open. So uh, even though I'm freezing for the, um, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all for my art. <laughs> now you got to work with Bondo in a, in a um, ventilated area. The reason why I came back here uh, at this stage is because um, this may be obvious to a lot of you. It certainly was never obvious to me. And uh, it wasn't until I started uh, becoming a student of the great Randy Cooper, who's become a good friend, uh, that I learned a little bit about Bondo and how Bondo works and what you do with it. It's a great, it's, it's a really great uh, tool. Uh, this is a, um, uh, a version of that, you know, it's, 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 uh, Evercure is, is the name of this company, but there's all kinds of different versions of this. It doesn't have to be this for it to work, but, um, as it starts to set, it becomes very clay-like and that's when you can sculpt it. And I didn't know that. Um, I just always assumed you, um, you let it dry. But if you can see here, I've got this like clump. And if you want the clump to go away, you just shut up, compressor. Gah! Uh, you just simply uh, clean it up. Now um, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be doing uh, a little bit of um, a blending in with my with my uh, earth, but I wanted you to see this in case you didn't know that that this is what you can do with it. Um, now, again, if you already knew this, forgive me, just skip ahead. But for those of you who didn't, um, it all of a sudden makes a lot of sense that you can, you can use this like clay and you can sculpt it. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm starting to do here. I'm just starting to, to sort of pick at the parts that, that, that I don't like. Uh, now, I'm still going to continue to blend, obviously, uh, with my uh, AK mud, and we'll do that. That's what we'll do now, um, because this, is, this can all sort of dry and harden together. Um, but I, uh, I, wanted, I, I, I wanted you to see this, this part. I didn't want to just go, oh, hey, because I thought it was important, you know. So um, can you see? It sculpts. So anyway, I, I, I thought that was neat. <laughs> Uh, you may or may, you may or may not. I thought that was neat. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to continue to clean this up and, uh, and, and, and then, um, we'll, I think we'll do it together. We'll put some AK interactive, uh, mud slurp down here. Now, um, you don't have to use any of these materials. There's all kinds of ways to do this, guys. You can get some sand, some PVA glue, and some paint, and uh, you'll, get the same, you'll get the same thing. You can use a little bit of powdered plaster in there, make a goop, and you'll get exactly the same thing. I just like these particular types of materials. I keep them on hand, and it just makes my life a lot easier so that I don't have to spend all day uh, essentially... Um, I don't, I don't want to spend all day mixing and cleaning and doing all sorts of things like that. So I, I, I use some of these materials now. Um, but again, as I've always stressed to you, there's a thousand ways to do things. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't sit here and go, this is the right way or the wrong way. It's not. You're just watching uh, a mediocre modeler lear learn the craft and get better and better at it. And hopefully we all will, right? Uh, because it's fun to learn. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and then we will uh, we'll come back and we will watch this sort of evolve into the next uh, the next stage of the uh, of putting this uh, diorama together. 
So, uh, it's AK uh, Terrain's Dark Earth. This is uh, what I was talking about. I love this stuff. I like to, I, I, I just like it. Um, not cheap. I apologize. So, I hope you, um, you know, I hope you forgive me. <laughs> but I like it. Um, other ways to do it, a lot, a lot less expensive too. Um, we talked about that. Okay, disposable brush and my AK Interactive geniusness. Let's dive in. So, um, just wanted you to see how this is all going to blend together. Now, this isn't our final color, obviously. This is just because I like to have it in the mud. When it dries, you can get it, you can get it a lot lighter. Uh, it loves to be airbrushed. And it's, it's, uh, it's, very, um, it's very friendly. Now, obviously, I'm going to take it just um, just kind of so it, it, it dabbles the ends of the, uh, the end of the diorama here. Um, I'll probably take it all the way to the, to the very tip here, just so that it, it kind of feels like it's just kind of pouring off the diorama. So we leave a little bit of the, the mahogany stained board here, just how it, just sort of at the ends, but not not perfectly square. I like things to be to feel a little more organic than perfectly square. But I uh, just wanted you to see what happens when this starts to sort of all come together, and uh, we watch the two elements here come together and 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 disappear and become one element. Um, you know, as I said earlier on uh, in the year, th that I made a pledge to, to, to sort of spend a little more time on finishing my models on camera. Uh, and I, I do like the idea of that. Sometimes I change my mind on what a base will look like and I'll come back to a model a year later and go, you know, I'm going to make it a better base for this. I don't know. It's just, just part of the fun of the hobby. Um, but I do also respect the fact that oftentimes uh, a lot of these kits are going to a, they're going, they're going to either a, your, your local club or they're going to be, uh, taken to uh, a, a, you know, one, one of your sort of conventions. We've got Wonderfest coming up, obviously. But again, I've got something planned for Wonderfest that I definitely, I think I'll talk about on camera, but not right now. Although some of you already know, I think, what it is. Uh, but um, the point being that for me, it's it's difficult to get anything there. You know, you've got to go with your kit your model um, and if it's got small pieces on it you got to figure out if you're not driving flying you better be at you know you better have it with you uh, on on the plane and then you better have some kind of a repair kit to go with that because uh, that's the only way you can fix these things when you get there unless you're going to start pestering someone else for paint and glow and I don't like the idea of that although obviously I've got lots of good friends now who would be more than happy to help me but um, I don't know just not the way I roll but hopefully this year I'm going to be bringing a piece that I know well at least I think I believe is travel proof and I'm excited about that Okay, uh, let's um, see here. Well, let's, oh, that's good. Just wanted you to see this sort of all starting to come together, because it is, and it just becomes one piece. 
and I'm really digging that. And then of course we'll get we'll get this surface all painted correctly. It's gonna I think it should be a little lighter than this. Although we, you know we'll use different striations and things like that. The surface that came on this uh, this this model was actually quite interesting because it was sort of um, looked to me like m more like the texture or the area you'd find if you were discovering the bones of a dinosaur, not necessarily where it lived. Because I think these, these incredible creatures lived in a very kind of tropical zone. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't like cold weather. Okay. Um, anyway, here we are. Here it is. And it is perfectly blended. Don't worry about these little speckaroos because this isn't the correct color. Um, it's going to get painted um, and blended and, and everything else. But I just, I wanted you to see how much fun that is. And um, so now it just looks like a little sort of mound. It, it, it's not just a, a piece of plastic stuck on a board. So I'm pretty happy about that. And once we get some paint on here and start to blend this in, this is really going to pop um, and then I've got to just sort of figure out where my um, my pieces my pieces of driftwood are going to go I must say I do like this piece uh, it's, it's quite beautiful um, we have this box of driftwood that um, my wife's uh, mother I believe years ago would walk the beaches and collect old pieces of driftwood and it just became a, a box that never got thrown out, thankfully. So uh, now I, I have the, uh, the box and uh, boy, am I glad I do. Um, so it's just now a function of figuring out an aesthetic that looks, looks good. So, okay, um, I'm gonna let this set up and dry. Uh, and then I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna go back to the uh, the uh, the T Rex and uh, Roadkill because um, I've got I've got some more work I have to do on this mouth here. Um, um, I'm pretty happy with her. Um, she's looking really she's looking good, but um, I've just got I've got a little more uh, a little more work to do. Um, on, on getting her sort of sufficiently, uh, you know, the cool, the cool factor. Now, of course, I'm showing you, you know, one foot away from these, from the model, but, um, boy, I am really happy with the way this, uh, this, this, this turned out in terms of the, 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 the skin, you know, um, it's just really looking, really looking good. And uh, yeah, could not be, could not be happier. Uh, but you know, you can drive yourself crazy trying to get these uh, these teeth right. But as I'm looking, as I'm looking at them, they look pretty good. I just got just a little bit of detail work to do uh, to 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 get that looking perfect. But wow, I'm uh, I, I'm just uh, could not could not be could not be happier with this uh, with this sculpt. Couldn't be happier. Um, and she's looking good on this base. Okay, so um, next steps, I'm going to start to blend in my base and get that all sorted. Uh, I'm gonna figure out where my driftwood goes and I'm gonna continue picking away at the mouth because I want it to be perfect. I've got to fix Roadkill's eye, um, and then I think we'll be ready for final reveal. So, um, thank you. Let's 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 plow on. Well, uh, it's now early evening here in California, so I've been uh, working on this for uh, I'd say about eleven hours today, ten hours today. Um, Primarily because I uh, I started early this morning and I just 
I, I just kept messing with the face and the mouth and messing with it and messing with it. And at a certain point, you know, when is it done, right? When is enough enough? We, uh, we started out with a vinyl kit from Pegasus called uh, T-Rex. And uh, here's the finished product. I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. I, I don't know what the lights are doing to uh, the colors and everything, mostly probably washing it all out or I don't know what. But to the eye, it's got a nice subtle effect. You can see all the shading. And uh, I kept the, the base relatively simple. I did not want to... Um, uh, I, I, I didn't want to go overboard with this base. Um, I just felt that I wanted to keep it, keep it relatively simple. So to me, it looks, you know, like a, like the tundra. And um, it's, he's sort of walking through a, a, a relatively tropical setting, but you know, I think he looks pretty good. He's very lizard-like to me. Um, and I couldn't be happier with him. Um, I think he, uh, he's got this really leathery looking skin, which is, I, I, I think a, a T-Rex would have. He, um, he definitely has some very interesting shading and, um, and I like the, the action pose. I think I, uh, I tried really hard to, um, to create a pose that I thought would be fitting of him. Um, he's pretty dramatic looking. He's got his road kill under him and uh, he's, he's probably just uh, sort of knocking the life out of it now is what he's probably doing. And uh, this poor little Stegosaurus is sort of struggling for its life. Um, interestingly enough, I read a fascinating article about it's, it's uh, sort of upper arms. It's, uh, you know, there was this conversation about perhaps these arms were really nothing more than, than for this animal to hold on to its mate for procreating. They weren't really good for anything else. Um, it's an interesting theory. Uh, I also read a fascinating article about the fact that these uh, apex predators uh, definitely, 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 definitely uh, according to the latest thought process, they hunted in packs. They didn't, uh, they didn't hunt alone. And um, I, thought that was, uh, an, an, uh, that, I thought that was a really interesting uh, piece of information. You know, I, you, you can't help yourself. You, you're working on a kit like this, you know, and all of a sudden you want to start researching it and, and, and getting more and more information because they didn't really discover the T-Rex until 1900. And so if you think about it, it hasn't been that long since uh, it was discovered, identified, and, and uh, you know, they, they started to sort of figure out w w what it was and, and how it lived and survived. And, and I love all of that, I just absolutely do. So I'm glad I took a break from um, everything else to sort of do something like this. I've got a couple other creatures in my uh, stash, uh, but we'll, pay, we'll paste those out. Next week, uh, well, the next model up is definitely gonna be something from the Irwin Allen uh, collection. I need to start get, uh, going on that part of my stash. Um, and I think we'll start small, perhaps even with uh, the, the space pod, and then we'll go to uh, perhaps uh, the Jupiter 2. We've got the, the sea view to build. We've got a, a huge 24-inch studio scale, uh, almost studio scale, uh, spindrift. So lot, lots of Erwin Allen to dig through for sure. Um, and I don't know how much of that we'll, we'll do you know, right out of the gate, but definitely uh, we're, we're back to uh, Lost in Space, I think, next week. Uh, but thrilled to have this uh, on a shelf in my collection. You know I like these built. And I like them in your collection, not in a box, uh, you stashaholics out there. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on this uh, crusade uh, that took 65 million years to create. I'm so 
happy we were able to get this done. And uh, thank you for obviously liking and subscribing. It means an awful lot to me. Hey, send me a note at Spruverse at Gmail. Drop a note in the comments. Follow me in the weeds on Instagram. And as always, I wish all of you please be safe, be well, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.